Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Toti bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. This time we're going for the Mimoplasm. However, we're going for something a bit different this time. This, what I'm going to do here is actually, I'm going to grab the original Devour for Power deck. So the original deck list, this is the one you can buy uh, from Wizards for things like 30 bucks or something. You can actually find it in Magic Online. Here we go. So. In the store under theme decks, you can find it, Devour for Power. It's this guy here for 30 bucks. So what I am doing here is grabbing that deck, which is, is not bad out of the box, but it's not optimal. It has uh, some cards that we can easily change. Um, and I'm adding up to 10 tickets in cards to the, to the deck. I'm rather replacing cards in... Uh, up to 10, 10 tickets worth. So basically, the idea of this is, is that for uh, 40 bucks, so 30 from the deck and up to 10 from what we are adding, uh, you can upgrade on this deck, the Power for Power deck, and you can make it much more competitive and, and interesting. So then let's, let's, let's take a, a look maybe at the cards that I removed from the deck first. So that would be that column over here. Um, these cards that I removed are cards that I think are just bad, just plain bad. <laughs> so, Slipstream Eel, I actually have no idea what the hell it's doing here. I assume it's just there to get the plus six, plus six on the commander once you cycle it, but yeah, it's just bad. Then Patchroom of the Nizumi, uh, I also, there's exactly one other rat in the deck, this is just, this is just not good. Uh, sure, you can ping them for a couple of damage when you when you uh, when you mill them, but yeah, this is just not good. This is not good. <laughs> then I took away all the three vows because I don't really think they are so useful. I mean, I love them design-wise, but I haven't found them particularly useful. It's basically like a pacifism, um, possibly a bit better because they still can attack other people. But yeah, I just haven't found them so great. So, Vow of Wilderness plus three plus three and Trample, plus two plus two and Flying, and plus two plus two and Intimidate. It's basically the same thing. They can't attack you, but they can still attack other people. Eh, not my favorite. Then, Dark Hatching. We this is just like too expensive to be to be any decent. I think like six mana for this guy is just way too much. We are gonna spoiler alert. We're gonna replace this for uh, um, Shriek Maw, which is much more, much cheaper and much better. Then Triskelabos, seven mana is not really what you want to be doing here for a creature like this. Sure, it does have some kind of fancy-ish interactions with, uh, like all the counters that come into play with, um, with your commander, because uh, basically this guy. You can exile two creatures. It copies one and has counters equal to the power and toughness on the or, or the power of the other one. So those are plus one plus one counters, and you can remove them to put little guys into play, and then you can ping people. But yeah, this G is just not good. Then a nerve. I guess this card is a bit better in this deck just because you can you kind of get some advantage of the cards that are discarded, but still not what I want to be doing. Mind Zaglo, cool picture, but I don't really like symmetrical effects. Um, I don't want to be. If someone else casts, else casts it, then that's fine. But I don't want to waste a card for an effect that affects uh, other people just the same as me. So yeah. Same with with this. Like, it's nice to mill everybody. It's quite decent for it for our, for our deck. But I don't really think this is worth a card. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is good in the deck, but I don't really think that this is actually worth a card in our deck. And then Brawn, I mean, I left Wonder inside, it came with two incarnations this deck. Brawn that gives other creatures trample if he's in your graveyard, and then Wonder gives flying. I found the flying okay, his evasion. Trample, not so great, and again, I don't think this guy is worth a card. So moving on. The deck originally came with 40 lands, um, as well as, as all the other uh, artifact 
acceleration and fixing, and I think that's a bit too much. I think you can you can pull off something like uh, 37 lands with all the all the artifact acceleration that you have. So I just took away the three worst lands. Um, this one, like it's cute that you can animate it and and transform it into a dude, but it's just too expensive. I don't think you're ever going to be using this. And then the signets, I personally do not like the signets. I never play them in any of my decks. Mainly because there is quite a bit of mass artifact removal or just artifact removal like aura shards or like uh, the five mana hybrid white green card that does tranquility for, for everything. And even this deck plays Oblivion Stone, which blows up your own stuff as well. Pernicious Seed, all those kind of things. Um, so yeah, we have replaced this ramp for some other kind of ramp. And then this last column here is, um, let's say, the column that hurts the most to be cut. Cards that are not bad cards, but either don't really deserve a slot in the deck, in my opinion, or just aren't what this deck is looking for. Skullbriar, for example, I love this guy, he's amazing, but yeah, he, he's not really what you want to be doing here. Gravedigger and Desecrator Hag. Uh, I mean, I understand you're going to mill a bunch of creatures, but I don't think returning them to your hand is what you uh, want to be doing. Effects like Zombify, that's cool, because you can reanimate it and put it directly into the graveyard, uh, into the battlefield and cheat it into play, but to your hand it just doesn't seem good enough. Then Grave Pact, um, the deck, ca I mean, I love this card. The deck came with Grave Pact and Butcher of Malachar. I left the Butcher inside and I took the Grave uh, Pact off, um, out, basically because the the deck just doesn't have enough sacrifice outlets and and um, cards to consistently take advantage of the of the Grave Pact, which is a shame because it's a nice card. And look at that picture, it has to be one of the best pictures ever. <laughs> Anyway, then Relic Crush is fine. It's like a super expensive hull breach, just too expensive. Sign and Blood is fine. It's a nice card, but we have better draw that we're going to be putting in. Scythe Spectre, he's cool. I mean, he makes everyone else discard, and you can maybe reanimate those creatures that they are discarding, but yeah, six mana is just too much. Then is that the Lord of Secrets? Um, yeah, again, seven mana, five five flying. Yeah, it's really cool to mill them for a bunch, but I don't think this guy has what it what it what it takes. Same with Lurgo. If I left the Mortivore in there, that is just a better version of this guy. Um, He's going to be a huge guy, and that's cool, but that's not good enough. Like, I don't want to pay 4 mana for an 8-8 eight eight that doesn't do anything. It's it's just not good enough in Commander. I in I believe in Commander, there's so, many, so much removal, so much creature removal, wrath effects, and stuff like that, that expensive creatures like these that don't do anything when they come into play or don't protect themselves just don't have a place in in these decks creatures have to be able to either be really difficult to kill or they have to do something when they come into play like some of the guys that we are adding um so i think that's actually it for the cards that we are cutting let me take a look yeah that's that's basically it um so these cards are leaving our deck so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go ahead and drag these up here to my collection because we are not going to be using these anymore and let's move on now to the cards that I'm going to be adding. All right, so first off, a couple of ramp spells to replace the signets that we took off. Rampant growth is just what you want in a ramp spell, I think. Uh, although the fi the signets do fix, this does as well. And it's much more difficult to take away the land that you are putting into play as opposed to just destroying an artifact like the signets. So that's cool. Kodama's Reach to go along with a Cultivate that is already in the deck. Dark Steel Ingot is fixing and indestructible artifact. These are okay because they don't get blown away. Coiling Oracle, uh, kind of like a Sakura Tribelder-ish style effect. It can 
Uh, all right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so Coiling Oracle for the rampy stuff. And Crows and Tusker, this one is pretty cool because it can get you uh, land. And also it's a 6-5 body once you once it's in the graveyard, so that's pretty cool. On this other side we're going to have some, um, some enablers, some graveyard filling stuff. So Golgari Grave Troll is dredge 6, you know, one of the classic graveyard fillers. Uh, and also if you cast him it's not that bad, it's like a lure wave, so that's decent. Splinter Flight, uh, Fright, uh, kind of a similar thing, he fills your graveyard. Tracker's Instinct, cool stuff with flashback as well. He can uh, get you a guy and uh, fill your graveyard. And then Forbidden Alchemy, kind of a similar thing. Then back on this side we have the rest of the cards. These are the cards that are synergistic with your graveyard stuff. So Vengeful Pharaoh, if he's in your graveyard, you can destroy creatures that are attacking you. Uh, Bone Horde, just it's uh, an equipment that gets really huge. And Necrotic Ooze gets a bunch of abilities, so seems like a no-brainer. Then these are just like huge guys that you want to reanimate or copy with your Mammoplasm. So Sphinx of Uthun and Sphinx of Vagosi are just some Sphinxes that get you card advantage. So that's pretty cool. Shieldred, not much to say about her, she's just amazing. Phantom Centaur, he's pretty cool because he has protection from black, so he, is, uh, he has some protection enabled in him. And then he is really difficult to kill with damage because he comes into play with some counters and he basically can't be killed with, with normal damage. And also the counters that you get from the other creature you move that makes him bigger count as plus one plus one counters as well, so that's that's pretty nice. Then Rune Scar Demon gets you a card, so kind of similar to a Sphinx of Wuthman kind of thing, a good come into play ability. And then Spear Breaker Behemoth kind of protects uh, himself, makes it indestructible, so that's pretty pretty good. Um, then here are just some good cards that we put in there. Trigon Predator, uh, just kind of a disenchant effect. Life's Finale, because we need at least at least the one Wrath effect in there, and this is possibly the, the cheapest one. Then Rite of Replication, it's, it's not so expensive, it's quite cheap as well, and it's a really powerful effect. And you know, you want, as well as Evil Twin, you want some sort of clone effects if you can have it, because that can help you get rid of annoying generals sometimes. Then Putrefy and Beast Within are kind of the same, uh, kind of the same effect, just help you get rid of annoying permanents. Shriekmo, as we were saying, replacing the, uh, the dark whatever, Hashling, whatever it's called. And then Ristic Study is just some amazing um, card advantage. And then on this side we're just putting some some nicer lands. Uh, Nephalia Drown Yard is cheap and it's really good in this deck. Just basically mills us or opponents and this is like, seems like a no-brainer. And then I mean these are like one ticket each more or less. So actually a big part of our budget are is coming out of these lands. I think like we have maybe maybe four ticks in in this column alone which is like half the budget. Um, I'll actually show you guys that now. Um, this is actually our budget. These are the cards there. It's seven and a half ticks. So it is not expensive at all, as you can see. If you're basically adding uh, seven ticks to your deck and you get all these cards, which is really good. And if you maybe already have uh, these cards and that's like, say, four tickets less, or if you have other lands that you can add, maybe you have the original duels or shock lands, which I'm not adding here because they are too expensive, but if you have them or other sort of duels, you can add those. Um, I, I chose these because they are the the best in price, um, let's say price quality relation. Uh, so let's do then one thing. Let's kind of just, okay, I don't need this anymore. Let's just drop these things over here. We'll do a cough sort in a minute. Uh, we just have to add these lands here. So that's nine lands. We need to take out nine of these lands here. Alright. So I'm basically taking out uh, two of each and then the cycle lands, which don't seem especially like especially great. I mean, I think they're fine if you're playing the 40 lands, 
but with us playing 37 I don't think we are ever really gonna wanna cycle those lands and we want to have enough basics to get with our cultivate and, and those kind of things so we'll just drop these over here and voila that's 99 so let's take a look at how our curve looks now so seems fine I mean a bit expensive on this side but these are guys we are maybe gonna mill anyway and um, yeah so this is our deck and then let's try to um, to give this a spin and see what it what it looks like. And yeah, I'll see you for the for the first round then. So before we start with the game, there's a couple of fixes and additions to the to the deck that I wanted to make. I played a couple of games with a deck that I that I just showed before, and here's a couple of things that I wanted to change. First off overwhelming forces um cuz we i think one of the biggest issues we have here is against swarm decks because we only have really the one wrath of god effect the um, what's it called life's finale that's kind of the only thing we have cuz mostly because of cost restrictions like decree of pain is amazing it's better than than this but um but yeah it's it's expensive. Damnation is also good, and there are quite a few wrath effects, but yeah, this is cheap actually. Here I have the price of the stuff I'm adding. Uh, overwhelming Force is like 0.11 tickets, so that's pretty cheap. Then Vizara, I'm adding her because she's actually a 5-5, a but we need the power and toughness boost for another creature. She has a really amazing ability. We want to copy it with the Mimoplasm, and you know, from the games I played, Avatar of War was kind of an all star. And you know this is a nice controlish effect. Since we don't have that many removal and wrath effects, I think Vizara is going to be pretty pretty good for us there. Um, then I added okay maybe this one first. Just another another fatty with an important ability, Mimoplasm. I think this is kind of the one you really want to have. You know like evasion. Trample and Shroud, so this is like what you want to copy with with your Mimic Plasm if you want to just go for beats. Um, and it's fine on its own, so I think this is a pretty and a, a good target to reanimate to. So I think this is actually um, a nice addition. Then Swiftfoot Boots, I added this just because it's, I mean, I think the Lightning Greaves is a nice addition to the deck because you're going to have a really fat Mimoplasm and it's really cool if he has... Um, if he has haste, either fat or something with a nice ability that requires tapping. So I think either way that's going to be a good addition. And a second copy of that is is good, I think. So that's why this is here. And then finally, read the runes. That is kind of um, kind of does a bit of everything that we need. It's card advantage. It allows us to sacrifice our say mimoplasm or, or something that would be exiled for example, and it also allows us to discard fatties that we have in our hand that we would might want to reanimate or living death or copy with Mimoplasm. So I think that's pretty good. And okay, maybe let's first go through the card that I'm taking out. So first of all, Vorosh, I mean, he is okay. He's a nice guy, but he's like a pretty stupid dragon with a like not relevant ability. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's Don't get me wrong, it's a good ability. But he just doesn't do enough for me. I, I think like our fatties have to have either really good abilities that we want to copy that protect our commander, or have to do something good by themselves, like steal spells or like kill creatures or stuff like that. I think he doesn't just do enough. Then Butcher of Malakir, Butcher of Malakir. Um, he, you know, I love this this uh, grave. Uh, packed effects. I use them in a lot of my decks, but I think this is a bit more build around. Either you put a couple of these in some sacrifice outlets, or or you don't use it so much. I think as a value card, he's not as exciting, you know. So I think the possibilities are either we go more for a sacrifice outlet outlet effect with great par uh, packed effects, or we just take it out. And since we do this in pretty much every other deck tech that I've shown. I just say, okay, you know, let's just forget it and just take this guy out. 
Then Riddle Keeper. Uh, this guy just doesn't do enough for me, I don't think. It, it's slow with three mana, one four, it doesn't really do much. If someone attacks you, then you put two cards in his graveyard. I don't think that's good enough. I might be wrong, but I don't think just this card is good enough for the deck. Then Bone Horde, I played this a couple of times. I mean, kind of the same the same idea with Vorosh. He's okay, yeah, he's a fatty, and then he afterwards pumps your guys. But a lot of the times he doesn't do anything because maybe there aren't enough creatures in the graveyards. I mean, we do mill a lot, but sometimes he just there just isn't, and then he's just bad. And even if he's like a 10-10 or something, I, I don't think that's enough, really. From I've been pretty underwhelmed with these cards from the time I've played with it, so it's just coming off. And then Fleshbag Marauder unfortunately gets the cut. I really like this card, but... I, yeah, you know, we have to cut something for it, and I think this is the card I I like the least from the stuff we have there, even though it's a bit of removal. So we are adding this to our deck, we are just uh, removing these, and that's what our deck will be, will be looking like. As for the price, um, this is what's what we are adding, and this is what we're removing, so we are basically adding like... I mean, these are all in the deck, that's why they don't have any prices. And this one was actually that we uh, bought to put in the deck. So that's what we're removing. So we're basically adding like one, like 1 1.2 tickets to the total price, mostly from Mizara. So I think that's acceptable. We, I, I don't remember what we were at, but we must be at like 8 tickets or something. So yeah, this is a deck we're going to battle with. And then possibly after the games, I'm just going to to give like a post-mortem analysis or something, see what I, what other things I would add or remove or whatever. So, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoy this and let's go on to the games.